Welcome to Wesley Impact. I'm Keith Garner and today we'll be looking at the significance of music and the Christian faith. Have you ever considered how the music you listen to every day impacts on your daily life? Welcome once again to Wesley Impact. Wesley Mission is a history of serving the needs of our city and beyond for over 200 years. And over that time, we've always developed and adapted our work to be relevant to the people we seek to serve and to share the Christian faith with them. This also applies to our television ministry. Wesley Mission has been on the presence of television in Australia since it was only five years old in this country. Like all areas of our work, our television ministry is always evolving. And as of today, I'd like to invite you to continue to journey with us as we develop what we do. We're always going to continue declaring the message of hope through Jesus Christ. We'll continue to feature an area of Wesley Mission's work. And as Wesley Mission has always done on every television broadcast, we'll continue to commend biblical teaching and have a short message. Though the format of our program might change, the message of hope and of God's love will always remain at the centre. We'll also continue to feature in our programme music. And today I'm going to be speaking with our music director for Wesley Impact, Craig Gower, exploring the impact that music can have on our daily lives and on our faith. Now, the Psalms sit at the heart of the Bible when it comes to worship. They not only held a central place for the Jewish community in their public worship, but they have been and are the core documents used by hymn writers as a source of inspiration. Just think of people like Isaac Watts and Charles Wesley in their day and the modern songwriters for worship today. I begin a short series of four talks on Wesley Impact and I shall start with the final psalm, Psalm 150. During my time at Wesley Mission, we've always sought to be as effective as possible in all that we do, and also to be transparent and present as much as we can in the work of the wider community. Here's a snapshot of the work I'm privileged to lead, and I hope this gives you an overview of the services we provide and how Wesley Mission seeks to express God's love to all. Bolstered by our strong Christian roots, the organisation has a vibrant spiritual centre that we call Wesley Congregational Life, encompassing worship services, community groups and pastoral care. In fact, during Wesley Mission's early days, it was this same congregation that would go out into the community to assist those most in need. Today, however, we've expanded to operate in 11 specialist service areas. Wesley Family offers a range of services to assist struggling families of all backgrounds. Wesley Youth assists disadvantaged young people to connect with others while learning vital life skills. Wesley Seniors works hard to address the growing needs of Australia's ageing population. Wesley Foster Care Services provide security, support and genuine care to children in need of a safe place to stay. Wesley Disability Services provides those living with a disability with a wide range of support programs. Wesley Homeless Services offers accommodation and resources to those struggling with homelessness. Wesley Counselling Services offers free or low-cost counselling to those who need it most. Wesley Mental Health Services provides vital counselling, inpatient and day patient treatments as well as suicide prevention resources. Wesley Carer Services provides much needed respite and support for carers. Wesley Help at Home Services offers in-home support to allow both older people and those living with a disability to maintain an independent life. And finally, Wesley Employment Training and Conferences provides opportunities on all sides of the employment spectrum, also running professional conference centres in both the city and at our bushland retreat. In summary, Wesley Mission currently provides over 130 different individual programs supported by over 1,900 employees and nearly 4,000 volunteers to assist over 19,000 families and individuals every year. As you can imagine, however, we are always looking for ways to do more. 
If you would like to see more of the work of Wesley Mission, visit wesleymission.org.au. You can watch loads more videos, catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact TV, find out about our diverse range of services and get involved to help make a positive difference in your community. You can also connect with us on social media and stay up to date on the latest news and information from Wesley Mission. wesleymission.org.au for many years now, Craig Gower has appeared on this program as our music director, looking after all of the songs and singers who brought the message of the gospel through music. I thought it'd be interesting to speak with Craig and get a better understanding of the man behind the keyboard. Craig, first of all, thanks for your contribution to this program and sharing with us uh, today. I mentioned earlier that music in the Bible is so important. It had a central place in the Psalms. Tell us a little bit about your own music background. Well, it was a really interesting background, <laughs> I do have to say, because I started music when I was 14. Uh, but before that, I was, I'd been singing for as long as I could remember. But um, it wasn't until I was 14 that I really had this, you know, epiphany, I suppose. But I was at high school and it was actually a choice. It was an elective program because all of the good classes like woodwork and everything were gone. The only two choices left were music and country cooking. So I went, OK, well, I come from the country, so how about music? So I thought six months and I'll be out of it. But I really developed such a connection and a love for it and also an acuity for some reason. Like within two weeks, I was learning to read music and I could start playing the piano very quickly and it just took off from there. Look, you don't look a woodwork man. I think <laughs> that the music suits you better. And you've used those gifts to serve in Christian ministry, haven't you? How did that develop? Well, once again, that was an interesting journey because when I came into music, I wasn't g going to church. Um, but eventually, like when I started coming to church and I was listening to the songs that were being presented in morning worship, I just thought, I'm really wanting to get a connection to this. And um, for me, it was a bit of a struggle because by then I'd actually been working in the music industry as a session singer and musician for like three years. So it was one of those things when I came into church and hearing the music from there compared to what I heard in the industry was a big change. Now, this is a conversation we've had before, but I wonder what's the difference between uh, worship and performance and how do how, what are the dangers? How does the crossover happen? Well, performance in itself, uh, the thing that is the tipping point that changes it from being a performance to worship is relationship with Jesus. So because out there in the world, there are so many amazing, talented, gifted musicians. When you hear their songs on the radio and everything, it's incredible. But for some reason, there's something missing from that. And it's the one thing which is relationship with Jesus. That's the thing that changes it. And it's really in the heart of the person bringing the song. It's the vehicle. But in church itself, when you are presenting a song, when you're bringing a song, you're wanting the gathered church, the congregation who are there, to actually come alongside you and be part of that sound. Part so of is that there song. a discipline? Because when you're leading worship for thousands of people, as you do, is there a discipline necessary for those who are leading singing and, and worship to commit themselves to do that and make sure it doesn't cross into the other? Yeah, very much so. And uh, by the same token, you, there's that challenge. And being a creative person, you know, you love to express and what you bring and, you know, being a very arty person myself, I tend to do that too. So for me, I'm always about inviting the church, the gathered church, to come alongside, you know, as I bring a song, as I'm leading them to make their resound, for, at, for it to be a strong sound from them, not from me and them to be the spectator, mm. you know, which is actually, that's the difference. You know, when people are sitting back listening to somebody sing, you know, and hearing that message then, but that's different to the actual congregation singing and making the resounding sound. Craig, one of, in our own tradition, one of the most prolific hymn writers, of course, was Charles Wesley and yes. that Wesleyan tradition, mm. where music was seen as an expression of ordinary people's lives, perhaps yeah. for the first time. Mm -hmm. In Wales, where I lived for a number of years, they said, why did the men all sing? Well, they couldn't afford any instruments. No, that's but right. the one instrument they got was their voice. Um, how, Im how important is the link between singing and faith for people, do you think? It's vital. You know, our hearts, like everything about our being, is designed 
to respond to music. When you sit in a movie theatre and you listen to a film score, you know, and it's something which it tugs at your heartstrings, when you hear that term, the visual aspect of it is almost like visualising tears falling off the violin bows as the notes occur. Because music in itself, it was only ever designed to carry the presence of God. Mm. That's what music was, is there for. So it's the language of heaven itself. You know, and our hearts are attuned to it. So when we hear songs, you know, when we feel that connection and when we he feel that gentle tug of the response, you know, it's not, there's nothing wrong with us. Mm. It's the fact that that's what we're designed to do. That's how we're wired. Now, Craig, you've just released a song. Uh, I, I know you've released it now, and it's been a long time in the coming. It and has. You, you've taken Top Lady's words, an old hymn. Yes. Uh, into, tell us a bit about that. OK, so this was... I came across this hymn. I mean, I've known the hymn forever, but I really found a connection with it about 10 years ago while I was touring in the United States. And I loved the lyric. I loved the story of what this was, you know, how... God, he is our rock of ages, how he is there. You know, like the, the verse in Isaiah that stands out for it. And, but I wanted to find a way to bridge the language of the music into the contemporary market because the original melody, although, you know, it has a very established sound, it's something that can't sort of cross over into the contemporary sound. So I wanted to find a bridging melody. And so what I did was I just sat down with it changed all the chords from major to minor, you know, as a musician could do. Um, and in about 10 minutes, this arrangement came out. But the interesting thing about it was that it took 10 years for me to actually release it as a single because it was still working in my life. There were still things that were being, you know, like developed in me and brought in me and seasons in me that I had yet to step into before that song could really be established on my heart as being something ready for the greater church to hear and for the world to hear, mm. you know. So, I mean, and that's the always, you know, as a songwriter, we want to be so quick to release our songs, but it can take 10 minutes to write a song, but 10 years to live it. Absolutely. You're going to be singing that for us today. And I'm so delighted, not only the east coast of Oz, but all around the world, That's people right. are, are recognising this song. We look forward to hearing you and the Wesley Impact Band with Rock of Ages in just a moment. It's been 200 years since the first Methodists met in Australia. To celebrate two centuries of faith and pioneering care, CEO and presenter Reverend Dr Keith Garner takes us back to where it all began. But we don't begin here at the heart of London. We begin in a town in the north of England. In this fascinating narrative, Reverend Garner chronicles the history of the life and times of the founder of Methodism, John Wesley. This fresh and thought-provoking documentary takes us on a journey throughout the United Kingdom, beginning in John Wesley's hometown of Epworth. John Wesley was born here on the 17th of June, 1703. This one-hour DVD travels on to his education years and beginnings of social justice in Oxford, to his final years in London. For more information on John Wesley, the man and his mission, Call 02-9263-5555 or email us at impacttv at wesleymission.org.au.
Well, that was wonderful, wasn't it? Somebody taking something that clearly has, has, has won its way into the Christian hearts down all those years, but giving it a very modern feel. It may seem rather strange for me to begin a series on the book of Psalms um, and to begin at the very last Psalm, but I think that helps us to understand perhaps something of the meaning of the Psalm. So I'm going to go to Psalm 150. So I'm going to read it first and then reflect upon it. We read, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre, praise him with the timbrel and dancing, praise him with the strings and pipe, praise him with the clash of cymbals, praise him with resounding cymbals, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the final psalm forms a kind of fitting conclusion because of itself, it's a great summons to worship. And throughout the psalms, we're met by this whole range of human experiences, all at one and the same time. The deep humanity of the writers of the psalms is what commend them, I think, down the ages. There are so many themes that reoccur through the book of Psalms. Now, some of them are very challenging. Uh, there are some Psalms that really strike a note of complaint or lament. There are the Psalms of deliverance, Psalms of vindication. Sometimes they express the real human experience a person or a community might well be journeying through. They may well at times give us insight into the marvelous poetry of the Old Testament but they will raise as many questions as they give us answers. And it's been said that whatever situation or mood you find yourself in, you're sure to discover a psalm that reflects it. In fact, there are some that, that have sections. If you're feeling down, read this psalm. If you're feeling up, read this psalm. They really touch on a great uh, wealth of, of, of human experience. John Stott, in his study on his favourite psalm, said, the book of Psalms points to the greatness of the living God and leads you to know him better. So turning to this final Psalm 150 in our book of Psalms, we have a catalogue of musical instruments, all used to express praise to God. Now, for a long time in the Western world, we didn't use instruments, it was just uh, the voice. But very often in the early days of the Psalms, they talk about the instruments that were used to express praise to God. And the Psalm has a, a great call to all of us to attend to God, to respond to God, to somehow in our hearts and our lives, to go out to him. And following all the complaint and pain and struggle and all the, the doubt that might well have been expressed in the earlier Psalms, we now have what I think I can call an enormous and glorious outburst of joy. And the reason why we're able to express our praise to God is found in his doing and in his being. Verse 2 we read, Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. So we're praising God, not just because it's good for us to praise God, not just because we feel like praising God, but we are responding to what God has done. His acts of power are not identified specifically, but would include, I'm sure, the power for creation, his care for his people, his love in redeeming us. So the cause of our praise is a response to what God has done. Every instrument of the time you can think of is to be employed in this worship. It's almost an, an orchestra of praise that is assembled. Everyone can play their part. C.S. Lewis, in his devotional studies on the Psalms, reflected, Noise, you may well say. Mere music is not enough. Let us have clashing cymbals, not only well-tuned, but loud and dancers too. Now, Lewis was a very, very refined person. And he was a person who enjoyed the, 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 the liturgy of the Church of England in which he worshipped. But what we see there is his recognition that this psalm is calling us to express everything that we have. What we have in effect is that we as people who love God must express our praise to him in all its totality. 
and I gathered up in my mind while I was thinking uh, of this particular psalm and knowing I was going to share it at the beginning of a series on the psalms, I thought about some of the things that this psalm and in fact all the psalms tend to do. First of all, they open us up. Sometimes we're locked in, aren't we? We're tight, we, 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 we don't really feel uh, ready to respond to God. I think music and psalms and worship opens us up. It opens us up to all the possibilities of God. It opens us up to the healing grace of God. It opens us up to all that God would do for, for us. When you've got children, you know, and you have to give them medicine, it's all right, but you've firstly got to get them to open their mouth. And the great thing about the Psalms is it makes us open and ready to receive whatever it is that God is going to give to us. Uh, secondly, I think it puts the focus on God. Now, the Psalms are very much about human experience. There's no doubt about that but they certainly focus on God. So they can talk about, I've been wronged, I've been hurt, I've been damaged, all those things. I'm disappointed, everything seems to be against us, running away from God, being followed and chased by God. But the focus ultimately is on God. And I thought that was an interesting conversation with Craig when we talked about that difference between mere music and music that is offered to God and, and has a focus on God. It's at that point that real Christian ministry can begin. And those of us that are involved in public worship know that there are those special moments when we say, now something is happening that is beyond my words, beyond our music. It is when God is meeting his people. And that brings us to the third thing that I think is true in this psalm, but in all psalms. They connect us with God. They're about vital living relationships. And in music, in, in, in the modern genre, uh, there are two things that happen. There is the connection that goes on with those who are ministering, those who are offering their skills and talents and, and, and gifts into the, 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 the great centre of public worship. But there's another vital connection. That's when the people of God connect with him. And when those two happen together, gosh, lives are changed. Directions become fresh and new. And we find ourselves moving in a whole new way. So when we come to the final psalm, when the book of Psalms are gathered together, when the writers are wanting us to, to really understand everything they've been trying to say to us, they're inviting us to praise God with everything we have and inviting us to use those words, praise the Lord, not as a bit of a nice religious response, but as a total response from the human heart, from the human life to him. Now that really is the secret of worship. If you would like to contact Keith and find out more about today's program, write to us at Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235, or you can send an email to impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. On our website, you can catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact, find out more about our work, read online magazines and articles, and connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube. You can also connect to Keith's blog and stay up to date on all of the latest news and information from Wesley Mission. wesleymission.org.au Now please don't hesitate to write and be in touch if you've got any questions or comments on today's programme. We always take those very seriously. Our email address and website again is impacttv at wesleymission.org.au or wesleymission.org.au I hope you enjoyed meeting Craig Gower today and finding out a little bit more about the work we seek to do in this city and across Australia. Please do join us next week for another episode of Wesley Impact. Thank you and God bless you. Wesley Mission provides more than 38,000 hours of out-of-school care each year to young people. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.